Hey everybody, welcome to Circuit Breaker Live, The Verge's gadget show. I'm Neil Eptel, I'm the editor of The Verge. Paul Miller's here. Hello. Uh, you might notice we're not on our set right now for Circuit Breaker Live. We're actually downstairs on the street in a Tesla Model 3 that Tesla was foolish enough to give us for the day. We're gonna make a whole long YouTube video with this car uh, that'll go up later this week. Our friend Marquez is gonna be in it, which is really cool. Uh, but this car is basically a gadget, and we have a gadget show. We're doing the show inside a gadget. We're in a gadget. Uh, so just real basics. Uh, it's a you know an EV. It's got 310 miles of range. This is a long range long range version. Uh, Tesla says the car starts at thirty five thousand okay. dollars. This is a sixty thousand dollar car. It's basically got every option: autopilot. Uh, the red paint is a thousand dollars. If you don't pay the thousand dollars, you can only get black. It's got fancy wheels. Um, do and you go, can do they go fast? <laughs> got super fast wheels. <laughs> um, I love cars. So this car is totally spec'd up, but the main thing about it uh, that I just wanted everybody on Circuit Breaker Live to see is this screen. Well, good thing I brought the Paul cam. Paul's got the Paul cam going. Uh, this is the only interface for the car, right? You Obviously, you've got a brake pedal and a, an accelerator and a steering wheel, mm -hmm. but there are no vents. There's no ignition key. There's no nothing. Uh, almost everything in this car. There's no instrument cl cluster. Everything in this car happens on the screen. I feel like the first question is, how do you know how fast you're going? Right, okay, so you can see here the car's in park. I'm gonna, right, it's not on. Okay. Now, what you, what's supposed to happen is the car is paired to your phone. As you approach the car, it'll turn on, you'll get in it, and oh. it'll just drive away. Okay. I don't have that set up yet, because it's just a, it's a, it's a review unit, basically. So you have um, a... So I have a little key. Okay. Well, like a hotel key, and there's a spot right here. There's one on the outside of the car, too. I just put it here. Oh, I got my foot on the brake. There we go. Now the car is on, Ooh. and we're in drive. And, and I see. forgot to buckle my seatbelt. <laughs> it's a narking pull out. And if I just give it a little, there you go. You can see the speedometer is right there. And you can see these are the front sensors. There's obviously rear sensors as well. Push that button to go back and park. Um, that's it. Like that, those are basically the physical controls. There's the gear shift lever here. There's the turn signals here. There's you know joysticks for the screen here. There's obviously. Pretty good horn, I would say. It sounded uh, pretty analog. <laughs> it did. Uh, but Paul, I want you to try to use the screen because it's nuts. Okay. So a thing that you often do in a car uh -huh. is you change where the vents are pointing the air at your face. Oh, sure. Give that a shot. Sure. See well, if you I'll can just, just grab the vents. <laughs> there are no <laughs> vents. There's just a shelf. Uh, okay. So give, try it. Use okay. the screen. Okay. Put that Paul cam down. Wait, you hold the Paul I'll cam. I'll hold the Paul cam you for you. You hold the Paul cam. Okay, well... I want a lot of wind in my face. Yep. Okay. But how do I point them? Oh, I'm going to crank your temperature. <laughs> okay. You're just trolling me. All right, it's right here. It's okay. Turn this Wait, down. What? And just, <laughs> the sound is horrible. <laughs> There's wind in our face. So uh, it's all here. Look at this. Oh, here. You do it. So Stop trying to if trick you, me. If you're looking at this on the screen here, you can see there's no vents, there's just this shelf. Okay. This area is a vent that blows up and that's a vent that blows out. Okay. And when you move this around, this is basically the location of the air that's pointing. Mm -hmm. When you move it around, the jet that's pointing up and the jet that's pointing out, they like interfere with each other and it points a single jet of air at your face, which is crazy town. Oh, good. Like most cars are just like, you just point the fins of the vent. Tesla's like, what if you want one giant thing? And like, you can just point it that way. This is so cool. It's so much more complicated than a normal car, but mm. it's like in the best way. It's so gadgety. Um, other stuff, if you look, this is the radio interface. It's obviously Tesla. There's an LTE connection up here. Um, it's set. Uh, See, you, someone's a huge Smash Mouth fan. Paul's playing with it earlier. Um, so you can obviously search. If I hold down this button, I can say play Kanye West. It does voice search. It'll just like light up a Kanye song over here, which is pretty cool. There you go. Well, that worked pretty well. There's our first copyright strike for the day. Um, and then this is pretty cool. So this whole center console, there's nothing here. But if you open this up, maybe you can see it. These are phone chargers for, get my, I think my case is interfering here. But that's a phone charger. If my case was on there, it would work better. Okay. And you can see it's got little USB ports. So you can swap them out for USB-C or Lightning, however you want to. So I think that's pretty cool. There are no power outlets. Somebody asked me on Twitter about power outlets in the car. If there's like a place for a dash cam, I have not yet seen a traditional. Oh, I've got my first 
Tesla issue. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> just I'm what is happening? I believe in you. Oh, look, it's yelling at me. Like, we gotta, we it gotta says get close out of here. console lid gently. Okay, so we're being real nice to the car. Uh, and then I have one other question from Twitter here. I just want to pull it up. Our friend Sean Hollister says, how are the volume controls? Okay. Um, they're, everything's on screen. So there's a volume control here, and then there's a volume control here. And then if I hit this, hit it's play pause. Oh, and then, nice. And then lastly, this is just basic Tesla stuff. You can navigate. It's got Google Maps on here. And pull that down. So that's nice. And then I want to point this out just because it's Circuit Breaker Live and it's really silly. There's Easter eggs in the car right now. Whoa. So we can bring up the sketch pad. We can. I don't know why you want to do this. But. Circuit Breaker. Circuit Breaker. Circuit Breaker. That's it. All right, we got to get out of here. Our director is yelling at us right now. Uh, we've got a whole rest of the show. Jake and Ashley are going to do the news, but literally, we have to get out of the car and run upstairs. So take it away, Jake and Ashley. We'll see you in one second. Apple's HomePod. Sorry, I'm still yeah, processing no, the was... fact that we're doing this show alone now. <laughs> okay. I know, that was very it's it was great. wonderful we're to listen to this without any visuals, actually. Yeah, I hope. I'm, I hope they make uh, it. <laughs> I'm sure they'll slowly. <laughs> um, anyway, Apple's HomePod uh, came out last week. And it turns out this thing is basically so hard to get into that if you need to repair it, uh, you're basically buying another one. So Apple released repair pricing out of warranty. That is $279. That is 80% of the cost of a brand new HomePod. So you're not really repairing it so much as you are like giving them some parts and getting a slight discount on a new one. What? do you think someone would do to this home pod that they would okay, have to get it repaired? that is the thing like you would have to like knock this from a very high shelf and apparently this thing like do you see i fix it's tear down i saw some of it they yeah. had to saw it open in order wait to get seriously so they took a saw and like cut it into um which like suggests it will be hard to break but also explains why it is so expensive to repair the the like slightly good news is if you're worried um apple's warranty is only 29 dollars. it only lasts for two years but uh because you're going to drop it, do it within the yeah. first two years. Don't use this as a portable speaker. Good point. Essential, we've been tracking their progress since... One of the most exciting ...way phones. back when they launched. Yeah. And it turns out that they sold less than 90,000 phones during their si first six months as a company. So I think the exact number from IDC was 88,000. Uh, so that's not great. It's kind of disheartening for anyone who cares about Essential, cares about having different... Yeah. Android phones available to them that are, you know, flagship quality. And on top of that, Essential has been going through a bunch of issues where the camera wasn't really working well when it first launched. They continuously are adding updates to the camera. Android Oreo still isn't running on Essential, and they're like, oh, we can't actually put 8.0 on. We have to now put 8.1 because of stability issues. So all around, just watching Essential. The has company been kind is of trying so hard, and it's like, it tried so many cool ambitious things it definitely like made a statement when it launched mm -hmm. but i mean it's just so clear that it is like immensely hard to launch a like flagship priced phone even if you're andy Rubin. yeah like it's no. not I easy mean, especially generation one there's just like not a lot of reason to to trust it and buy in until you've like seen the other options you know and like clearly it wasn't perfect so mm -hmm. yeah hardware is hard hopefully they get on the show too is that know, hardware that is, is very difficult perpetual lesson um Amazon is actually doing a reset, sort of, of its uh, discounted phone program. It's been going for like two years, and basically, just like the Kindle, you would get a discount if you let them put some ads on your lock screen, um, except now they are getting rid of the ads. Uh, it's gonna, the phones are going to cost more now. They'll cost $20 more, but if you already own one, um, you get to keep it for you know, whatever, you, they can't charge you more. There's still going to be some ads on the phone. There's going to be like a lock screen. There's going to be a widget on the home screen. Um, and there are Amazon's pre-installed apps, but the lock screen itself is not going to have ads on it, which means you can, uh, you know, set your own wallpaper for the first time, which is really nice. I think it's sort of weird that, like, this was, like, that was the defining feature of this program, that, like, there's a lock screen ad, and now it's not. Um, but I guess it's still good that they're figuring out ways to make the cheaper. It kind of a smart idea, like, yeah. selling ads, but, my God, I would hate to have ads on my phone, like, Right. Because, when like I you look up. at the locks on your phone so many times a day. It's valuable real estate. It's like a magazine's cover. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that's 
expensive for advertisers. So this, I can imagine, maybe made good money, maybe, but apparently, twenty dollars a user seems to be like <laughs> they're a, like about we'll what break it was even worth. For good. They, that's all they're charging more now. So maybe, maybe it wasn't that big. Cool. Uh, and last week we talked about the S9, Samsung's rumored new phone. We talked about the dual cameras, how they're going to be vertical, kind of like the mm -hmm. iPhone 10. This week, or earlier this week, we talked. We saw another rumor about the S9 having a headphone jack, which would be a reversal from the S8, and just a totally different idea than basically all the current flagships on the market now. You can see the headphone jack right here. This is actually the Dex pad. So when the S8 came out, Samsung also launched a product called the Dex, which basically lets you use your phone like a computer. And this is the version two of it. It should still work with the S8, supposedly, rumors. Uh, but this one lets you lay the phone flat. So maybe you can use it as a touchpad or something. Like we saw um, right. Razer had so something sort of similar where it slotted into the actual laptop, is, but it was the idea of the keypad. So remember Dan Seifert reviewed the the last version of Dex, and like it seemed to was like, actually pretty good and pretty yeah. usable. I sat next to him while he was testing. I was like, "That's cool. Like yeah. it's an interesting it's an idea, idea for people who like bring their phones from home or for something." For sure, for sure. And also, I'm just completely all about the headphone jack coming back. Every time I go to plug in headphones into my uh, Pixel. I just like you cry a little bit inside. It's I I perpetually forget that it doesn't have a headphone jack, and then just yeah. And then your heart is broken over and over again. Yeah. Uh, it's worth noting that also it has a Bixby button still, <laughs> so you're getting one thing back, but you're keeping Bixby. One day they will allow it to be reassigned. I believe that. <laughs> Good for you, Jake. Sorry, I just slapped my microphone. I apologize. <laughs> for that. Um, and finally, this week we have some. Incredible dongle news. We have a four-way lightning dongle, two lightning out, two lightning in, all at 90 degree angles. This is what's, this I don't is know. This is a crazy contraption. For, okay, let me also just say, this product is called Node, normal name, but it's from a company called I Love Handles. I have no idea if this thing is certified in any way. It only costs twenty dollars. You can't get There's anything no way it was even in white There's plastic no involving Apple for twenty dollars. So. There's, yeah. So the idea is you're just supposed to plug all of your devices into this You just one. mix and match and do whatever you the want. The mouse is great. I don't have any real understanding. So you have to have at least one like power cord going into it. Mm -hmm. But theoretically, like cert, like an iPad could be plugged in and then charge a uh, pencil out the other corner, God. right? So like maybe you don't have to have a power cord come in. I, the the possibilities are either endless or zero because it doesn't work. I'm not sure. We have to get this in. I'm really excited for this. Wow. $20. It, it makes the pencil charging look not so You can stupid. also infinitely string these together. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. You should not try it. <laughs> yeah, please don't yeah, explode this is the office. Yeah, electrical hazard. Uh, okay, so this might be our last week of news, maybe. All news is ending. <laughs> news will continue we've, to happen. Jake and I just won't guide you through down. the news. But next week, we're going to try this new thing where Jake and I are going to do Ask Circuit Breaker. So if you ask some questions in the comments or in the chat right now, next week, Jake and I will try to answer them. So give us some We're leaving it super open-ended here. Yeah. Ask Circuit Breaker. Choose your favorite. Oh, and wonderful timing. Paul and oh, Eli have made it wow. up. wow. I'm glad you what up? returned. How was the Tesla? It was amazing. <laughs> I've, uh, I've been in the YouTube chat this whole time. <laughs> I've left some great comments about great, you too. Great, great. It's great. The Tesla was incredible. Getting up here was incredible. That was super fun. Uh, we're gonna make a whole video with that car, like later, literally later today. Uh, Marquez Brownlee is on his way to the studio right now. We're gonna hang with him in the car. Ashley's gonna hang with me in the car. Uh, so look for that on YouTube later this week. By the way, thank you, Jake and Ashley, for covering for vamping <laughs> while, we, while we got back here. You did a great uh, job. But Heim Gartenberg is here now. What's up, man? Hey. Uh, you have brought us. It's just an incredible bundle of wires. Well, all I can see is Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> so, so last time on the show, we had regular wireless chargers. Yeah. Uh, wireless chargers have mutated since then, and now they're weird, and now they have hubs. Yeah. H wireless chargers are out. Wireless charging hubs are in. I'm into it. So we have a bunch of those here. Uh, I guess we'll start with, this is kind of your, your standard, most normal vanilla one. This is the Nomad wireless charging hub. Yeah. Uh, it's a wireless charger on top. Uh, on the bottom there's a little hub down here. You have a couple USB ports. You have a USB-C to USB-C port. Can I just, just be honest with you? This thing looks a damn mess. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> just like just straight up. Like this is a product where at Anker headquarters they were like, you know, Steve. Mm -hmm. You just gotta so try is, again, man. Yeah, so this is Nomad, which is one of Anker's competitors. You can see where they were going with, like, the cord management and, like... But then you have everything kind of wrapping around. Yeah. So... Wait, so there's power in. Power in. What, and then, how does you get power in? Just, you so there's, there's a oh, okay. so it's barrel a plug. Regular power oh. plug. Um, you have USB-C port, three regular USB ports, and the idea is that you can charge up to five devices. Wireless on top. So down here. Is that thing plugged in? Yeah, I think so. Confirmed. Confirmed. Ooh, hey, it works. Okay, I'll take and it. And it actually has these like oh, couple nice. lights down here, so you can actually figure out what's plugged in How where. Much does this one cost? Uh, this one costs eighty dollars. So expensive relative to wireless charging and hubs, but like if you combine the two together, a good hubs like thirty forty dollars. Good wireless chargers thirty forty dollars. I would prefer this if they didn't try to manage the cords. Like trying to hide the cords mm -hmm. makes it look messier than it is. Well. Then I have then I have a product for you because is this officially licensed? I think this is officially licensed. GameStop okay. is selling it. Okay. Uh, okay. This is the Technofun Pikachu Pikachu induction charger. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Now what is happening on the show? You just look now? at Pikachu like this. This is the first press photo I ever saw. Yeah. Where do you think the, the plugs are? Oh god. Yeah, see that That's was a great. big worry. That's good news, great. everybody. They're on the side. On the side. Plugs are on the side. So again, you have barrel plug. Uh, you have three regular USB ports for, for charging your non-wireless charging things. Take your phone, put it on top. Take your phone, oh, put it on top. Phone will charge. And, <laughs> is that, uh, is that, is that good precarious? Uh, it is a little precarious. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It's not I feel precarious. I feel less good about putting putting my, you know, $1,000 phone on top of here than I do on, say, this. Yeah. Uh, and I will, of course, point out the uh, true to Pokemon feature of the cheeks on the Pikachu actually light up, uh, so oh. you know it's charging. Are there going to be other Pokemon that lend their abilities to your phone? <laughs> like, uh, we can only hope. Bla Blastoise. <laughs> How much water. does that cost? So this costs $60. Uh, is the power in on the side? Yeah, power in is on the side. This is horrible. They got yeah. halfway through designing this and game. Where do you want to put the power in, Eli? I don't know. Well, all right. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> okay, $60? Uh, $60. Right, it's a good, like, joke gift. Um, next up, we have the Sinovolt. Uh, this is not a wireless charger. Sure isn't. This is a USB battery pack. It's one of the big ones. This is actually a weird thing. This is a prototype that mm -hmm. the company sent us. They were doing a thing on Indiegogo. The Indiegogo page is gone. The company does not seem to exist on the internet except for a Facebook page. I'm still trying to figure out so what So you happened. have the last one. So this might be the only one in, in existence, but what it is, is it is a modular wireless charging bank. So you can take these... Sinovolt modules, and you can just clip them on. So you got. Oh, so that's just a plug. That's now. just a giant plug, but. It's a, you can clip them on both ends. You can clip them on both ends. This look, this is this is ridiculous. And. Uh, you doing it? Oh my got god! Got it. This is horrible. Got to do the clips. This whole this whole idea is horrible. Uh, wait and, oh, wait wait now if you get a call. <laughs> so this isn't gonna. This is gonna be right. fun. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna work for you. I don't understand this, and I don't know why people are trying to back this. I'm and not sure. Not enough, I'm not, not sure. Big. I'm not sure they are. All right. So this was all just a prelude. Yeah. This is a prelude, though, to, to you saying there's actually a good USB-C yes. charger. In this so there is a good USB-C right. charger hub. Yeah. This is the uh, HyperDrive USB-C hub wireless charger. It's made by a company called Hyper, which mm -hmm. started on Kickstarter back when the first USB-C MacBooks came out. Uh, they make these like aluminum docks, aluminum USB-C hubs that kind of like seamlessly clip onto the side of your MacBook. Uh, this is their next thing, which is to combine that with a wireless charger. This is a prototype. They are currently running a Kickstarter campaign or just finished. Um, this actually no longer is what the product looks like. They've redesigned it. They've gotten rid of this integrated cable so that you don't have to be as restricted by it. Basically, this is a full USB-C hub. USB-C, 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 USB, uh, sorry, USBs, USB-C, which can also do power pass-through, okay. uh, Ethernet, HDMI, SD, and microSD. So basically every port that is currently missing from your USB-C laptop. And then you, like, flip it up and do one of these guys. And then you can flip it up. It can charge flat. Oh, you know what's funny is your computer doesn't have My ports computer on that side. doesn't have ports on that side, so we got to put it on that side. That's why they've gotten rid of the integrated cable. Come on, man. Uh, and you just plug that in. Okay, can I be honest with you? Mm-hmm. And it's going to charge? 
and it'll charge. Presumably it works. It'll charge, yep, it works. I've been using it all week. Okay. Uh, it charges, so, you get all the ports. Like, this is the this is the desk thing for your well, life. Well, let me be honest with you. This product is a repudiation of everything USB-C is meant to stand for. Yes. Right? Because mm -hmm. what you are really supposed to have is USB-C accessories and peripherals, mm -hmm. not another nasty hub so you can actually connect the... Wait, wait, the so only USB-C port on this is one so you can pass through charging, so right. that like when you wait. come to work in the morning, you just plug this into your laptop. And can I just tell you, if you want I... like a USB-C Ethernet? Yeah, I want like actual USB-C devices, and then like a, just a huge not just an ever-expanding array of dongles. Oh, I feel like this is the this is what USB-C promised. You you sit down at your desk, you plug one thing in, it charges your laptop, it powers your USB-C display. You can finally look at pictures off of SD cards. <laughs> and Why can't I just have these ports in my laptop? Can I, I'm just going to tell you a story. Because you, so you, you want your tiny little laptops with your dainty little <laughs> backpacks and your little espresso. Uh, we sit, my desk at Vox Media, just over there, mm -hmm. is right next to our IT department, which is super fun. Right. Because I get to see all the comings and goings. Our, this company's VP of engineering rolled up to them the other day and said, I just need some dongles because my computer doesn't have enough ports. <laughs> and they just started foisting <laughs> dongles on it. It was the saddest thing I've ever seen. So so your dream version of this my dream. Is, is one with eight USB-C ports. My yeah, the idea of USB-C yeah. is that it will replace USB-A. Mm -hmm. And what is happening right now is everything is still USB-A and we're just getting we just live in dongle mm -hmm. dongle city. But if we're living in Dongle City... Dongle City is not a great place to live. It is. It isn't. But yeah, this is the mayor of Dongle City. If we're already City. living there, this is, this, is, this is the Dongle that you want. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, great. Like, it's the best real estate in Dongle Town. Yeah. And that's cool. I I'm just going to get a real quick. So actually, I asked our IT there department. Is, there, is, there is a catch, though. Oh, because this, it, it, it this, is the mayor of Dongle Town. But just to be clear, this is what you're mad about, right, Neil? That there's only one that there's big, there's, No, that there's big USBs. There's three no, no, I'm not... USBs. Those are, I want those to be on here, where they belong, <laughs> oh, because I need like, them. It's just like go backwards in time. To a see, more that's useful the wrong, time. That's the wrong approach, though, because we need to embrace <laughs> USB-C. Like, it is a better spec. When it's done right, which is another barrel of worms that is a completely different rant, but when it's done right, it's good. Like, you, the... That I broken charge, time, everybody. I can charge. <laughs> literally, it's like smoke coming out of his ears. So USB-C does this to me. We've all agreed that the Pikachu is the must-buy, mm -hmm. right? The Pikachu so is the one. So here's the problem with this. There is actually one problem, okay. other than that it's a Kickstarter project and you can't actually buy it yet, is that it was on Kickstarter for a $99 early bird, and its final price is going to be $160, <sighs> which is a lot of money. You know how much it costs to put a USB-A port in a laptop? <laughs> 15 cents. Sure. What are we doing to ourselves? <laughs> Just, just ease us through the transition. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm very sorry that <laughs> your situation is so complicated. How are those USB-C headphones coming along? Um, not great. Yep, there not it is. Awesome. Okay, we're gonna. <laughs> sorry, buddy. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Uh, I have some exciting news. Lauren Good is coming back with a new show. Uh, well, old show versus is coming back with Lauren Good. Uh, I've seen some of the early season. It's super funny. Uh, we have a quick trailer for that, and then we're gonna be back. Chris Welch is gonna show us what's going on in wireless earbuds. Hi, I'm Lauren, so am I, and we're finally back with a new season of Verses. You might know this video series as the one in which the right Lauren, as in the one who's usually correct, tries to talk sense into this Lauren about gadgets. One of the amazing things about the Internet of Things is that normal stuff is becoming Wi-Fi connected, like this Brita picture. So if you want to do something else, like charge your phone or stick an SD card in there at the same time, you need to use a bunch of adapters. I love adapters. This is a Roomba. And this... <laughs> it's clear, to me at least, which one of these is the better phone? You mean the one that doesn't cost $1,000 and is still a fantastic phone. So you can pair it with Bluetooth headphones and have your books read aloud to you. Oh, for f**k's sake, just get a tablet then. Are you guys fighting over your Brita pictures again? Look, it's easy to get overwhelmed by all of the gadget decisions you're supposed to be making these days. So our goal is to lay it all out there for you and tell you which are the best products that you should buy and use. Or when it's better not to buy a new product at all, 
which is probably at least 80% of the time. Yeah, she's always as much of a downer. I'm a realist. Anyway, go check out the new season of Versus. You can find it right here on YouTube and of course on TheVerge.com. We're back. Sorry, two Lawrence at once. We everyone needed a break. <laughs> a lot to think about. Uh, Chris Welch is here. Hey, Chris. Yes, how's it going? It's going. You have brought us a selection of charging cases that are very interesting and <laughs> wireless earbuds. And they also the contain cases. earbuds. Yes, earbuds. Uh, let's see. Okay, so what is, you've reviewed a bunch of these lately. Mm -hmm. the, the AirPods are right here. Everyone knows what those are. What's yep. the rest of this stuff? Uh, well, the AirPods are worth talking about first because, I mean, they work so well. It's been 14 months since they came out. And you're probably wondering if anyone else has beaten them or put out something better. And the answer is no. Uh, they've gotten close. Uh, there's, there's a big market right now. Uh, there are some of these that cost $300, some cost $150. Uh, there are Samsung, Bose, a bunch of brands are taking part in this game. But when it comes to like ease of use, sound quality is okay. It's good enough for most people. And the battery life, uh, the AirPods are still on their own pedestal. It's also, the, the case size is... They vary a lot. So the Bose is my favorite case, I think. Just kind of the most like futuristic gadget. It's got lights on both both sides. Oh, everyone like loves a, lights. Yeah, lights are what you want to see when so you're buying. Here's, I actually like the thing. Samsung one better. That's real nice. Look at this. Yeah. The, the, the Bose is subtle. huge. The, the Samsung is nice. Right. Yeah. What I'm going to just point out, though, is all these are huge yeah. compared to AirPods. Yeah, because most have a battery inside that's going to charge the AirPods two more times. So do the AirPods, though. And, like, they have 24 hours of extra battery life in the case. But just, like, yeah. take out those Bose ones. Here's an AirPod. Everybody knows right. what this looks like. Yeah. Here is this monstrosity. <laughs> yeah. Is this just Apple as the W1 chip and W1 Bose chip? And I think this is for the phone calls and like better voice with Siri and things like that. And uh, whereas these manufacturers focus on being somewhat subtle. I mean, Bose isn't great because these actually stick pretty far out of your ear when they're in. Uh, but these sound better than the AirPods, like, like full stop. Uh, the sound quality is And those great. are the Samsung ones. The bass is excellent on the Bose. Uh, they cost around $200 right now. Which these is are the Motorola ones. Just like look at the comparative size yeah. of all these. So I'm going to say something, and YouTube, you're going to get mad at me, and that's fine. And you can tell me that you're mad at me, but be polite or... or I'll just, I'll just ban you. I'm already mad you haven't even said anything. The AirPods sound horrible. <laughs> They're horrible no, I sounding. I agree. Like, I don't, I just did the whole HomePod review, mm. and there's all the Apple people. They're like, I wear AirPods in the street, and I listen to the HomePod at home. And it's like, yeah. how can you choose love, a side? How can you choose? <laughs> I can be like, I'm buying this limited speaker because it sounds great. Mm. But then in my everyday life, right. like a tin can is rattling in my ear. I just like, I don't understand so, that. So connection quality aside, uh, do any of these really beat Apple on sound quality? Uh, the Bose do. Uh, the bass is way better than the AirPods. Uh, they're open design, so you can hear things around you, which I don't like. Uh, if you're a runner, you're going to be a fan of that. Uh, but the AirPods, like, I don't know how people use these on the subway or, like, use yeah. any kind of noisy environment. I don't know how you hear your music. You probably turn it up to, this like, is the Bose, unsafe correct? levels. Yeah, these are the Bose. Uh, these are the SoundSport free. All right, so we got uh, John Shipman in the chat saying people should just straight up copy AirPods. Uh, I don't think that is currently possible, right? Apple developed its own chip. Right. They've got their own software in the iPhone. Hmm. It's like the W1. The W1 is in a whole bunch of like Beats headphones as well. Can anybody else compete with that? I mean, I think Apple realized that you can't just do Bluetooth. You need something on top of Bluetooth. So like W1 handles pairing and handles battery life, which is why these have such better battery life than everything. Mm -hmm. But I don't like Apple's one size fits most approach. I mean, that's why I can't use the AirPods because they don't fit my ear. I bought them twice. First what? when they came out, I was like, oh, these are pretty cool. And I brought them back and then I've tried more of these. I've been disappointed. So I went back like two months ago yeah. and maybe I misremembered how they fit, but no, they still I don't also, this, this whole charging case situation is great though. Yeah. Like if you're a gadget person, like that Samsung charger is real nice. The these Sony. are the old Sonys. They, they, they're new Sonys at CES. These came out last year. Yeah, they just. So these uh, are the old Sonys. They yeah. changed the case. I mean, that case is just real nice. <laughs> All these charging clips are nasty. Yeah, this has got like a '70s kind of vibe to it, maybe. But this uh, Sony's got one is like newer, nicer ones. This is just pure hilarity. This is like a pill dispenser for your grandparents. <laughs> it's like you know, it's not not the most not the look you're going these for. These are Jaybirds. Like, all of this, I, I'm into all of these, yep. like, charging cases. Something pocketable is, like, what you want. Like, these and the B&O, these are the most expensive pair that we have. $300 for these. And uh, the, sound, good? the sound quality is great. I mean, it's Bang & Olufsen, so they've got really good sound But they all quality. have the same Bluetooth dropout problem. They drop out here and there for, like, a split second, but that adds up over, over a day. If that happens, like, 10 or 15 times during the course of your day, that's going to be very annoying. Sometimes they're fine. Like, you can be at work. Here at the office, they're great. 
at the gym, they're awesome. Yeah. But like walking down the street, they just. So if you're not an AirPods person, you got an Android phone. Well, you can use AirPods with an Android phone; they work pretty well. Yeah. But they're not. They don't do all the things that W1 does. But mm -hmm. you can use them. Mm -hmm. But if you don't like the way they sound, you got an Android phone, or you're just on Apple stuff. Which one do you get? Uh, I would either go for the Braggy Dash. These are 150. Uh, these are the. This is the company that kind of kicked off this whole truly wireless earbuds trend on Kickstarter. They raised case. three million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And this case actually isn't a battery case. Oh, so yeah. these have one charge, and once that's gone, you've got to plug them in. Uh, but it's six-hour battery life, which is one hour better than the AirPods. So. At least they've got that, so you can listen to them for longer. Uh, the bows are good. I mean, one one big issue with these is uh, there's often a delay uh, when you watch video. Uh, the audio is like two seconds behind, <laughs> so it's like you're watching a dubbed version of whatever you're watching on YouTube or Netflix. And because uh, they're doing audio processing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's one. Uh, so how these work is uh, there's one master earbud and there's one slave, and so your music goes to one earbud, back to the other one, back to the phone, and most of these don't tell the phone to like sync the video with the audio so you wind up with a super annoying delay. But some of these are problems that the slow march of technological progress will right. solve for us, right? There are some things coming this year. Um, Qualcomm has said they've got a chip coming that's going to help the situation help out the situation a bit. Um, once these earbuds once these ear earbuds start to use Bluetooth 5, that's going to make a big difference as well because when your phone has that and the earbuds have that, that should make for a much, much better connection. But right now, these are all Bluetooth 4 point something and... All these proprietary... Yeah, and they fall and they drop out and... Uh, yeah. I'm just saying, earlier we saw the like, Samsung Galaxy S9 leaked. <laughs> the headphone jack. No confusion there. Any headphones you want. <laughs> but I will say, some easy. of these do have... Some <laughs> of these... a charging case. It's true. It's true. <laughs> you're not on the plane like... Remember headphones? You're not like on the plane like, hang on, everybody. Let me open my phone case. Remember when Horrible. your dad was like, turn down the stereo or put some headphones on, and you plug that like big quarter-inch yeah. jack yeah. and put the headphones now, on? Now, like, listening. turn down the stereo or boot up your weird little ear computer. <laughs> That's going to be great. Sorry. I'm not... I'm really... I like technology. But I will say, there's something to be said for actual buttons on your earbuds. I like yeah. the Bose have like actual volume buttons or... Okay, track it. controls, yeah, absolutely. So, whereas on the AirPods, you do a bunch of Siri, a bunch of voice controls. So a lot of these have actual buttons. The Braggy have buttons that you actually push into your ear. Yeah, can, which, which gets which ones are those comfortable? Those you, are. You right mentioned here. that that hurt. Yeah, you've got to shove them into your ear because you push the buttons in. Oh. So when they're inside your ear, that Ooh. gets pretty uncomfortable. So our producers in my ear pointing out that I have like regular Bluetooth headphones, like cans, and they have. A regular jacks so I can watch movies on the plane. Mm -hmm. None of these will work with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they're great for the gym or for your commute and things like that. But if you want to watch video, most of these are going to be ruled out. Uh, the B and O actually do do video pretty well, so that's a good recommendation. But they're three hundred dollars, so you're, t you're talking serious money. And for that much money, they really shouldn't have any any kind so of dropouts or any. You issues were saying there's like Bluetooth five, a new chip from Qualcomm. Yeah. Have you seen any of that stuff demoed? That not yet. I mean, it's all on the way. Um, so you just got to hold out hope that it's going to be better this year. Someone's going to compete but, with yeah. the AirPods. So 14 months know, later, they're still failing. The Bluetooth 5 standard for audio isn't super finalized. Right. And once that's finalized, then that will show This up. whole situation should get smoother, but it's taking time. I mean, these have been out. We've seen these for a couple of years now, and none of them have, have managed to top Apple. I see. I'm now seeing AirPods everywhere, and yeah. I never see any of these. They still look dumb. They're never going to look good. <laughs> you see them everywhere. Hey, look, Apple's, They're accepted Apple's now. Ahead. Apple's way but, ahead of the uh, curve. They pulled it off. They, don't, right. they don't look graceful. Well, thank you for that frustrating several minutes of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Chris. Absolutely. Just, buy, in the trash. Look, just buy an iPhone, <laughs> buy AirPods, buy HomePods, sign up for Apple Music, mm -hmm. iCloud does something, do something yeah. with that. Just yeah. have a great time. Absolutely. Just build those walls, man. Okay, uh, Paul. Mm. You did something this week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I feel like the news just goes kind of over my head. I'm like, what? what's the bigger picture? Mm -hmm. So I came up with a new segment that I'm calling Explain Yourself. So check it out. Oh, God. <laughs> iPhone battery replacement weights are shortening, analyst says, by Jacob Castroneves. I see you, Jake. Are you busy? Well, what do you what do you think about this story? iPhone battery replacements weights are shortening, analyst says. Well, you know, my, I have an iPhone six, and uh, it hasn't shortened for me, so I'm gonna say this is a lie. Oh, you're still waiting? I am still waiting. Hey, Jake, can you hold the mic? Way to chat. Yeah, I would love to. 
This is a new segment I'm calling Explain Yourself. Okay, what do I do in this segment? You just explain yourself. You wrote an article saying okay. that basically it's easy to get a battery for your iPhone. Is that true? Um, it's getting easier. Like before, if you went to an Apple store and were like, hey, I want to get a new battery for $29, they might have been like, come back in two months. But now, they might go, okay, you know, in two weeks you can have a battery. So it's not great yet, but so it's getting better. Get you battery. still, well, you might be able to get a battery. I think it depends on which model of iPhone you have and probably also which store you're in. But Is this just Apple damage control? Overall, this is like not great for Apple, and I think it is good for customers, which is like probably the coolest thing about all this. So even if you have to wait, it's gonna be better for you. Yeah, I mean, I think if you have an iPhone that you like aren't quite ready to give up, but like the battery is sort of giving out at the end of the day, like for $29, you should totally go and replace it. The wait times are getting shorter and shorter as they get more batteries in stock. Definitely put it on your to-do list. Last question. Is Apple an evil company that was slowing people's phones down on purpose to make them upgrade? Mm. Wait, Jake, Jake, <laughs> Lord. I'm a, I'm a truther, so yes. We heard it here first. Jake paid by Apple to not say anything. The real truth. I'm not bound by any, you know, payments. Explain yourself with your friend Paul Miller. Good job, everybody. I feel like the title of your segment is the question I now wish to ask you. <laughs> All right, Ashley's here. Hi, Ash. Hey. You were all dressed up for Circuit Breakers. Yeah, tonight. you know, I just really wanted to flex for the show. What What is happening to your face? <laughs> So, uh, the Toy Fair is this weekend. Oh, yeah. And I've covered it for the past few years, and companies are now getting a little smart in introducing their toys before the Toy Fair. So this is one I wrote about this week. It is Hero Vision, which is an AR toy from Hasbro and Marvel. So you get to be Iron Man I've, and play a game. For several years now, I've wanted to be Iron Man. I think a lot of people have. Yeah. yeah. Wait, okay. So this is basically a... A VR headset. Exactly. And your phone goes in. And you in strap it, your phone into it. And, and instead you, of VR, it's, it's AR. But yeah, it's kind of like Snapchat where you see the world around you, but like things will pop up. What is the situation? So this is called the gauntlet. Oh. Yes. I just call it the thing on your hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so you, this basically is how you unlock the game. Okay. So you'll notice these stickers, and you'll see them here too. The game is able to recognize these stickers. So when you load up the game, you're going to hold out your hand to kill enemies. But when you first load up the game, this is how it unlocks, is by seeing these stickers and registering uh, them. Yeah. Okay, can we, can we see this in action? Yeah, totally. So, okay. Because this is an AR game, I'm going to load up two phones. One where you'll actually see it, how it should look mm -hmm. like in a good view, and then the other where we can actually put it in here and play. Okay. Um, so this is, if you want to see before while I'm loading stuff up, this is in the middle of a game that I was playing earlier. I'm gonna put this on. Wait, yeah, kill some, kill some of the bad guys for me. I've never done this before, so. Also, can, oh. so it sees your hand. Oh wow! Oh, that's cool. Then I can like. Oh, my camera guy, you're done for. Uh, this thing is really yelling at me. You're supposed to protect the portal generator. Where is the portal generator? I think it's <laughs> it's right tough because you. I think this game really does work best if you're. Oh, yeah, that's, that's your shield. shield. Okay. So you're supposed to look around and then see the enemy, t okay. target it, hold up your hand. So oh, this is like, we're, we're now starting to see these like pretty, uh, I don't know, like accessible there uses of AR. There yeah. So this actually has nothing to do with like AR kit, Project Tango, like nothing like that. Uh, this that kit, one off. <laughs> it's really loud. This you can run so long as your phone has iOS 6 and higher or oh, wow. Android 5 and higher. And it really can fit, like, on the bottom of the box here. They set it up so that people can just see, like, you can have a huge phablet phone. Oh, wow. So that people, when they buy this, maybe not sure if their phone works, they can mm -hmm. read about it and also just make sure their phone actually fits oh, inside. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh. So I'm setting this up. This is all set up for me already, so I'm going to okay. play with it. Yeah, but yeah. you guys can play with it. <laughs> Thanks. Later. Thanks for sharing. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Let's put this up. 
Yeah, so they say this is for kids eight and up. You know, me like, you're gonna have a kid soon. Would you get your kid a phone? Uh, this, is, this is my this is my question. Like, when is the right in general, when's the right time? Child, my my child will be raised in the woods away from all the <laughs> with wired headphones. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wow, this is like involved. Yeah. Sometimes I get it on the first go, and then other times I don't. Get in there. Come on. Circuit breaker. You, this I is why we do the things live. This is like the Bluetooth pairing of toys. <laughs> I know. Why? Okay. This is perfect. There we right, go. Got it. There got there it. Go. Okay. There go. So now you're in there. So you can make adjustments. I can actually take my glasses off because this is a whole mess when I don't. Having long hair, also not ideal. Okay. okay. So now you can see the world, right? Because the camera's on? Yeah. And I can see my hand through here. But does your hand look like Iron Man? Okay, so because I looked down at that marker, now I see a defense base there. Okay. So that you can change the game by changing up where you put the marker. So if you oh, put one higher up, maybe you'll have a different experience than if you put one on the ground or something. Okay. So we've got an image of what. Oh, yeah. It's a it's simulation of what Ashley's seeing. In the... Yeah. And now it's beeping again. <laughs> All right, Ashley, turn to your right. There you go, now oh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So now you're just shooting? Yeah, so now I'm just shooting. Um, there's enemies, like, populating around me. But this does remind me, like, on the Circuit Breaker show at CES this year, mm -hmm. uh, we played with... I want to monitor this. Yeah, so let's listen. Wait. There we go. So I, like... And then, so what you were just saying on the Circuit Breaker show? So on the Circuit Breaker show at CES, Lauren Good brought on another AR device that was a gun, remember? Mm. And that was really cool, too. So we're seeing some of these more practical applications, like for regular toys and games that I think is really cool. Oh, wacky. This just, like, magic-eyed and made itself work for me. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm just going to do it, okay? We're just gonna... Now you get to you become... try to stick this in there. You become... Oh, yeah. Okay. So you were saying... Nailed it. it? Wow. <laughs> And then to tighten it, yeah, just turn that one. I together. get the feeling that perhaps my head is larger than <laughs> either of these companies anticipated. So we did see a bunch of AR stuff at CES, right? Yeah. And then here, we'll put this oh, on you. <laughs> this is the <laughs> other way, but oh, yes, God. there you go. Where is my hand? Can you see it now? Yeah. Good. Okay. So yeah, you have to look around. Oh, there's Paul. Oh hey, hey come here. Come here. <laughs> 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 um, and there's that. Okay, I get it. Can you read chat through through? <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead many and tell displays. You that the resolution of this camera does not does not make up the chat. <laughs> I mean, I totally get how this would be fun if you were a kid. Yeah, and um, so there's only ten levels. They say that should be like several hours of gameplay. Mm. Um, the way though. So the device, this whole setup costs $50, but I think the way they're going to eventually make a little bit more money off of it is they have these little stones. We have one here. It comes mm, with the game. But they're going to sell... stones? Yes. What? Yes. Infinity stones. I've been watching all these movies. I'm like, what are It's all coming stones? together <laughs> for you knows? now. Yeah, so you can buy those uh, outside of this pack, and okay. you'll get extra power. So it changes up how you play uh... the game. Yeah. I think I might be dead in this game. You might be dead. I, I might, might be in heaven. <laughs> was like, How is a it? Real I mean, it's, it's very pleasant Iron here. Iron Man heaven like. Um, this is wild. It's you know I, we've seen every high end demo. We have a whole VR room full of all the newest stuff, and this is actually the most. Like I understand why this product exists and what I'm supposed to do with it in the mm -hmm. way that Oculus doesn't. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. just sort of understand what's happening here. Right. Why don't they use AR Kit and Tango and it, AR Core? Can I say, they probably just want to make it inclusive for more people. Yeah. Can I say something else, though? You look really cool. Yeah. I was going to say, it actually looks really great. How much? Well, duh. <laughs> you know what I want? I just want a regular Iron Man mode. Where you like, just, like, walk around oh, yeah. and it just, like, shows you information like, about invest, your house. Invest in companies. And, yeah, like, and you're like, just turn on the lights. And, and it's like, does it? <laughs> invest in companies. Yeah, Paul, you know what you should do in that mask? You should give up your weapons manufacturing business. I've been trying to, but war just keeps on finding me. <laughs> uh, how much does this thing cost? 50 bucks. That's you're, you're almost there, Paul. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Is it do 50 it? bucks? Because headsets are cheap. Yeah. And you don't really? That Marvel license. Does that app you know? work with, you need this thing? Does it work with other headsets? 
Um, well, it's all design. It has this, like, proprietary clasp and stuff, so no. No, no but if you just have a regular headset, can you just get that? Oh, I mean, and, like, yeah, you could put your phone in anything, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Marvel But you hacks. wouldn't have the mask. Again, the poor Marvel people are on the control room. are just, like, <laughs> freaking out right now. Look, don't hack their products. They're very kind to, to bring them here. Um, anyway, I think that is the show. Uh, people are... People are just in the chat. We have time for questions. I'm just like looking through them. Uh, questions. Yeah, we had a ton of Tesla questions on Twitter. I'm just gonna look at those real quick. Oh, they're right here in front of me. Um, people ask, how's the build quality compared to my Jeep about the Tesla? Here's what I'll tell you. My, my Jeep did not cost $60,000, but I've sat in $60,000 cars before. Actually, you reviewed a BMW. You've been in like a Rolls the Royce Rolls. for us. Um, <laughs> Those are like really high-end cars. The Model 3 for $60,000 is not, does not feel like an expensive car, right? It, it's just a very, it's a nice sort of mid-size car, but like it's, it feels like its base price is $35,000. But it also has a computer in the middle. It also has a computer in the middle. That is true. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> very um, it's very distinctive. The trunk, people are, uh, Adam says, how much can you fit in the trunk? Uh, the trunk is huge. And there's a frunk. And, there, and there's a... A frunk? There's, yeah, like... Like it's large enough for like a um, like maybe like a carry on bag. Yeah. Okay. Or That's like cool. a like a very small very glam. gymnast. Yeah. Uh, Chrismo says the main screen LED or OLED. It's obviously an LED. Like it's an LCD screen. It's not like a 17 inch <laughs> OLED panel, which itself would cost like sixty thousand dollars. Four K. Yeah. It's just nice. Um, if you don't pay for an Ansh autopilot, autopilot's really expensive on the car. It's not a five thousand dollar option, mm -hmm. but it has some features. Does that add sensors? It adds some sense. Have you gone to try autopilot in the city yet or no? No, I haven't tried it in the city. We're going to drive it. I'm going to leave here and like run downstairs and play with the car. Um, I, this is a good question. So can you unlock the car if they have a key in your wallet? Oh, yeah. We'll find out. I'll, I'll go try it right now and we'll leave an, the answer to that one in the comments of this video. Um, but you said the ideal thing is it, it just works with your the phone. The ideal thing is it just works with your phone. And then here's, we'll take this last one. Tolu asks, how does the base model compare to the upgraded model besides speed and range? I was talking to Andy Hawkins, our transportation reporter. And he pointed out that you can not get the base model right now. Mm. So there's, can you turn off that Yeah, I, I think, think it's, it's, I think it's, it's that one. Um, so the, the base model, to, to navigate the complex web of like EV credits and taxes, and they're basically only selling the upgraded model at that higher price. Oh, so the $35,000 model. model is like, people have ordered it, but it's not going to come for quite some time yet. Mm, but they needed to have a, have a skew. The whole point is to get, get you in at 35K. Can the Tesla be hot wired, says John Shipman in the chat. Uh, we're going to find out. I'm worried about hot wiring a car that is full of that many lithium iron batteries. But maybe that'll be a great video, too. It's always worth a shot, what I say, <laughs> when hot wiring. Um, is there wireless charging in the car? There's not wireless charging in the car. There is, if you saw in the very beginning of this video, and we'll show it again in the next video we make, um, it has custom like cables mm -hmm. it, it's got usb jacks and they're custom cables that wire up into the console so it lightning. was set up with two lightning two side lightning. by side but you could run a USB C or yeah whatever and then this one somebody asked is there a place to mount and power a dash cam i didn't see one i'll look there's no Again. like cigarette lighter. i didn't see a cigarette lighter i don't think elon wants you to smoke in his car in the future smoking will be illegal yeah also <laughs> driving your own car yeah like I said, we are literally, we're going to end this stream right now. I'm going to run downstairs. Ash is going to come with me. We're going to make a whole video with that Tesla. I think Marquez actually just walked in the door to help us make that video. So that's going to be really fun. Look for it uh, in a couple of days. we got to, like, shoot and edit a video. But that was Circuit Breaker Live for today. Thank you guys for joining me. I think we did a good job. We did fine. <laughs> Explain yourself. Uh, thank you all for being in the chat. I love reading your comments in the chat and responding to them. It helps us drive this whole show. We'll be back again next week, Tuesday. Uh, 4 o'clock Eastern. It's supposed to say what's going to happen on the show next week on that board, but it doesn't. So it's just going to be a series of surprises until we give up, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>